So welcome back from the short virtual coffee break. So the next uh, presentation session will be related to some, let's say, infrastructures and tools. And uh, just briefly to remind you that uh, you can post your questions in Q&A or in, in the chat, or you can raise your hand if you want to talk with the presenters. And also you should respect diversity, meaning um, please read code of conduct for the conference and behave in accordance with that. The first paper which will be presented today in this session is Rossio Infrastructure, a digital research tool for social sciences, arts and humanities. And it will be presented by Gonzalo Melo da Silva, uh, who is a Portuguese researcher at this Rossio Infrastructure. And he, Rossio, uh, Gonzalo holds a PhD in medieval history and European PhD from the NOVA University of Lisbon. Uh, and he took his PhD in this year, actually. So congratulations, uh, Gonzalo, for that achievement. Uh, he has a broad interest in various fields, ranging from medieval history, maritime history, urban history, and religious history to the digital humanities, especially historical GIC, I suppose it means uh, game information systems and science communication. Uh, so Gonzalo, uh, I am going to stop sharing my screen and you have uh, in total 15 minutes for your presentations, but please uh, leave a couple of minutes for the discussion. Okay, uh, good morning to everyone. Thank you, Dragon, for, uh, for your um, presentation. And also on behalf of my colleagues, I would like to thank you uh, for accepting our paper. I will going to read our presentation in order to respect the time that was assigned to us. In 2016, the Partenus project defined research infrastructures as complex agglomerations of knowledge, data, people, and services that bring together diverse resources for a wider use base and make these resources reusable and available for an appropriately long term in order to support research, either individual or collaborative, and share the results of that research. In Portugal, the Foundation for Science and Technology created the National Roadmap for Research Infrastructures Report in 2013, with the objective of mapping and evaluating the Portuguese research infrastructures. Initially, it consisted of 40 infrastructures, including Rousseau Infrastructure, Social Sciences, Arts and Humanities. Rousseau Infrastructure is a research infrastructure coordinated by the Nova School of Social Sciences and Humanities. It integrates six Portuguese cultural institutions, the Lisbon Municipal Archive, the Portuguese Film Archive, Carlos Gulbenkian Art Library and Archives, the National Theatre Dona Maria II, the Directorate General for Cultural Heritage and the Directorate General for Books, Archives and Libraries. Rousseau also includes content providers as are the cases of the Portuguese Web Archive and the Diplomatic Institute at the Portuguese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The Rousseau infrastructure has five major goals. The first one is to aggregate, organize, connect and contextualize and provide free and open access to digital resources related to social sciences, arts and humanities located in these Portuguese institutions. The second is to promote the development of high quality research on social sciences, arts and humanities, stimulating new agendas and debates. The third is to generate synergies and articulate individuals and institutions in order to promote scientific innovation and cultural heritage dissemination. Four, to contribute to the internationalization of social sciences, arts and humanities studies, allowing researchers from all over the world to have a more transparent access to contents in the Portuguese language. Finally, to build a sustainable network between academic and non-academic communities to better respond to the social challenges. This paper aims to present Rousseau and reflect on how its services will contribute to change, promote and develop quality research, collaborative work, and dissemination of knowledge. It is divided in two parts. The first will present the metadata aggregation approach and the applications that will be employed by Rousseau and its potential users. 
will then focus on services provided by the platform, such as a disco discovery portal, exhibitions, collect and collect and digital collections, and a virtual research environment. Digital resources of interest for research in social sciences, arts, and humanities are dispersed over a large number of academic and cultural heritage institutions, which brings challenges to the discoverability and usage of such resources. An often used approach, and the one applied by Rocio, is metadata aggregation, where a central organization takes the role of facilitating the discovery and use of the resources by collecting their associated metadata. Based on these aggregated data sets of metadata, Rousseau is in a position to further promote the usage of the digital resources by means that cannot be efficiently undertaken by each providing institution in isolation. The technological approach to metadata aggregation applied by Rousseau is based on the OAI PMH protocol. This protocol was designed in 1999 and was meant to address shortcomings in the scholarly communication by providing a technical interoperability solution for discovery of e-prints via metadata aggregation. The cultural heritage domain also embraced OAI PMH, since discovery of cultural heritage digital resources was only feasible if based on metadata instead of full text. OAI PMH is nowadays widely deployed in academic and cultural heritage institutions to support cooperative networks such as Europeana and the Digital Public Library of America. The metadata aggregated by Rousseau is processed centrally by several systems in order to provide access and search functionalities on the metadata, which then used by the virtual research environment the digital exhibitions and collection applications. Rousseau Systems also published, according to the FAIR principles, disaggregated datasets and other datasets created by the research researchers while using the infrastructure. The figure one here present presents the applications that form the Rousseau infrastructure, how they are related and, which, and uh, with which users uh, they interact and which applications interoperate with external systems. A complete description of the application architecture is provided in a paper that we are going to publish here. During the initial operation of Rousseau infrastructure, the metadata harvest from data providers will consist of a simple data model based on the 15 elements of the Dublin Core metadata element set. Nevertheless, Rousseau's applications are being implementing, implemented for supporting a richer data model, which consists in a profile of the European data model, EDM. This EDM application profile was defined in 2017 by a working group formed by representatives from Portuguese academic and cultural heritage institutions and was named EDM DRD application profile. As mentioned above, Metadata normalization and enrichment are supported by controlled vocabularies that are published as Lincoln Open Data by Rousseau Infrastructure. At this time, the following vocabularies are being developed. Rousseau Thesaurus. This vocabulary consists of terms like designations of, of topics or general concepts. Rousseau Agents. This vocabulary includes personal and organization names for information organization within the platform. Rousseau places. This vocabulary consists of toponyms, including names of geopolitical entities, areas, and geographical features that may be of relevance for information organization in the platform. Finally, Rousseau periods. This vocabulary includes names for ge geopolitical, Geologi pardon, geological, historical, cultural, or artistic periods for information organization in the platform. The Rousseau vocabularies are being modeled in SKOS, a W3C recommendation for Thesauri, and other knowledge organization systems in the semantic web. In addition to SKOS, the vocabularies reuse elements from other widely used ontologies, for example, B-frame. The development of Rousseau vocabularies 
leverage existing structured and unstructured vocabulary resources, including lists of index terms provided by members of the RECIU consortium, as well as by reusing sections of established thesauri in the social sciences, arts, and humanities, such as the Gettys Art and Architecture Thesaurus. As linked data resources, it is fundamental for the Roussillon vocabularies to include links to external resources identified throughout URIs. This is achieved by declaring mapping properties between concepts in the Roussillon vocabularies and external knowledge organization systems, such as the aforementioned Getty AAT. The metadata aggregation process process and the, the control vocabularies developed are the pillars that will allow Rousseau infrastructure to create a platform. The platform will employ different information and communication technologies, ICT tools, commonly defined as devices, applications, and systems that allow different agents, such as individuals and organizations, to interact digitally. A discovery portal, a virtual research environment, and a digital exhibitions and collections. Here we are presenting a working progress of the image of the portal that we are now developing. The, dis the discovery portal will allow the search of digital resources like documents, videos, phot phot photographies located in the different heritage institutions, providing simple and advanced search options. Uh, uh, for instance, we will uh, gra grant access to more than five to around 5 million digital uh, objects. In the, in the, late, in the, the later case, um, the results will be more concrete and orientated towards controlled vocabularies with filters that allow a more immediate approximation of the desired result. This is going to be particularly important for the research community. On the one hand, researchers are used to build more advanced research surveys and need tools to help them refine the results obtained. On the other hand, the research model will allow them to optimize the time spent on search and increase their research capacity. Furthermore, it will help them to open new lines of reflection and interpretation on the patterns, trends, and links between the aggregated resources. In the case of Roussillon, the discovery portal will allow access within the same platform to digital sources dispersed in different heritage institutions and to scientific outputs produced at Nova University. The discovery portal is the core of Roussillon platform since all products and services are highly dependable on their rightful implementation. Therefore, the development of simple and advanced research based on control ontologies and vocabularies is vital for the interoperability between systems and platforms and dissemination of archival collections to social sciences, arts and humanities, experts and the general public. Another service the platform will provide are exhibitions and digital collections. These activities use IPA media with the objective of developing a given subject, resulting to a diverse set of digital objects arranged according to a predetermined narrative, potentially accessible to a wider and geographical dispersed audience. The digital collections, not to be confused with sources digitized here, are similar to the aforementioned exhibitions, aside from small differences. For instance, the digital collections will be small um, size exhibitions targeted to specific audiences, such as students and teachers. These digital exhibitions and collections will resort to documentation aggregated and connected within the platform and contribute to promote their value. They will encourage users to search for digital resources in the discovery portal to learn more about the object displayed, but also to get to be acquainted with the related academic, re academic research projects in development. Finally, the virtual research environment is de designed to create a web page working environment to enhance the research and facilitating the sharing of Roussillon digital resources. Although this feature is open to anyone who access Roussillon, it is being developed with the specific communities in mind, such as researchers, teachers, and school and university students. Following principles of technical interoperability with the use of open source software 
and the adoption of standardized data organization standards like the OAI PMH protocol, sustainability, security, and easy to use practices, the virtual research environment is an indispensable tool for intuitive research infrastructures. Its collaborative character is, partic is particularly relevant, enabling dialogue and cooperation between different interlocutors in the scientific community. Thus, keeping in mind the words of Tim Sherrod regarding platforms, Fossil Platform intends to be a relevant digital tool for unlocking, sharing, and exploring the Portuguese cultural heritage. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gonzalo. Do we have any question now for Gonzalo? But just briefly, please, we have and the further program, we should int introduce the Paul Walk for his presentation. If not, I would suggest again uh, to post your questions Q&A or to contact directly Gonzalo. Uh, it's really nice that you presented that you have nice progress, I would say, in, in your country related to this infrastructure and looking forward uh, on next conferences to see the further progress as well. But if, if you have any question, please uh, just put that in the chat or post a question in Q&A or contact directly Mozao. Now I'm going to, to introduce our next speaker. Uh, the title of the, present, of the presentation is uh, Scholarly Communication Catalog or Cataloging Open Source Scholarly Communication Technologies. And it will be presented by Paul Volk. Uh, so Paul, thank you very much for accepting to be with us today. Uh, Paul is a technical consultant with 30, 30 years experience working with information systems and web services, primarily in the higher education and cultural heritage sectors. Between 2006 and 2013, Paul was deputy director at UConn, University of Bath, leaving to join Edina, University of Edinburgh, as head of technology strategy and planning until 2017. More recently, Paul started a consultancy business called Antleaf. So, Paul, can you please uh, present the the catalog in the next uh, 15 minutes. Well, thank you very much, Dragon. Um, yeah, so I'm going to give a, a very uh, brief overview of the catalog, which um, was built recently, and I'll leave uh, a few minutes for, for questions. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is um, just quickly some acknowledgements, um, and then talk about the purpose, the design, the features, and lastly, the um, plan for sustainability, which is always uh, a challenge with these uh, publicly funded projects. So SCONCAT was uh, developed by my company for the uh, Confederation of Open Access Repositories at CORE um, as part of the Next Generation Libraries Publishing Project. So this is a project um, funded by Arcadia, which has been running for nearly two years due to finish next year. Um, and I'd just like to acknowledge the contribution from Ilkai Holtz at CORE and Sarah Lippincott from Born Digital, who did a lot of the uh, data gathering and data curation um, work for this. So the, the purpose of this um, catalogue, initially this was conceived really as a desktop uh, research exercise to inform the next generation libraries publishing project. So really we were just... Um, our initial um, thought was simply to gather together as much data as we could about the, the state of the art of software and technologies in, in uh, that space. Um, and there was a, a very significant report which had already um, recently been published, the Mind the Gap report, um, which um, didn't quite um, fit our brief, but certainly overlapped significantly. So um, with permission from them, they were, they were very helpful, the team behind that report. They shared their data with us, and that data was the data which we used to seed the initial um, database for the catalogue. Um, and as we thought about this, we, we realised there was an opportunity to, to evolve this from being simply a report into becoming perhaps a, um, something more sustained and something which would be updated over time but also something which um, could be a useful tool for people um, who are examining the, the state of the art of technology in this, this particular domain. 
So uh, just a quick overview of the, the sort of the design principles behind this. So um, it's a technology catalog. We use the word technology um, in a very loose sense of the term to mean software, standards, services, those kinds of things which are relevant to um, um, scholarly um, communications in general and, and publishing in particular. Um, the catalog itself is, is um, highly categorized. So the technologies are represented as records within the catalog and then a, a, a considerable number of, of different facets or, or categories are applied to, to those technologies. We've also made an attempt to start to map dependencies between those technologies where, for example, one piece of software um, depends upon another piece of software in the catalog as a, as a component of it or some such arrangement. Um, and lastly, just to say that um, this was built as a, um, a web-based um, relational database using very common um, technologies, Ruby on Rails, um, SQLite, um, deployed with Docker. The, the, if you're interested in those kinds of technologies, you'll recognize those as being very uh, standard ways of, of building such a, an application. So a little bit more about the, the metadata and the classification. So each um, technology record has some, um, some fairly straightforward and basic metadata, such as the um, homepage uh, of the project or service behind that software. Um, we have very much focused on um, open source software. Um, it's not quite a requirement for being in the catalog, but it's, it's certainly a, um, significant criterion and we definitely favor open source software. Um, so we have a, um, an opportunity to put the, the URL to the, the code base for that software, typically a, a GitHub address nowadays. Um, and then various pieces of metadata about things like the licensing for that software, um, um, how and where it's hosted, if it's actually a service which is being hosted, uh, and so on. But then we also have these classifications, as I, I said earlier, that, that which we use for faceted searching. <coughs> Excuse me. So just running down those quickly, we have um, what we call um, readiness level. Um, this is actually adopted as standard, which is used by the European Commission nowadays, but was originally developed by NASA, actually, um, for expressing the, um, what they call the technology readiness. So the extent to which this technology is ready to be deployed in a number of different circumstances. Um, we have a, a notion of adoption level. Um, how widely is this technology used? Is it ubiquitous or, or uh, perhaps only used in one place or, or somewhere in between those, those things? Governance is really important, particularly if you're picking up um, an open source um, technology. It's very important to understand who controls the um, direction of travel for development of that technology. Um, so we, we have a way of classifying governance. The business form, which is sort of related to governance, but is actually more about the organization behind the software. So is this software being um, developed um, or is this a technology being developed or maintained by, for example, a commercial vendor or is it um, a formal community um, or an ad hoc community or just a project from um, some enthusiasts or somewhere in between? So we, we have a number of um, classifications for that. Status is simply um, really the um, degree to which this is still a, um, a well-developed, um, continued. it's continuing to be developed or, or is a well-supported piece of software. Um, the category, um, what kind of technology is it? So is it a, a software code base? Is it a, um, a deployed service? <coughs> Excuse me, is it a standard? Um, various um, types of um, technology. And finally, the function. So we have a list of functions commonly um, found in scholarly communications. Um, so authoring, um, preservation functions, that sort of thing. So um, each technology can be associated with one or more of these, these functions. 
So the, the point of these um, facets and the reason we focused on these was to essentially develop this tool, which you can see in the picture there. So this is a, a faceted search interface, and this is actually the home page of the catalog. So there's, you know, it, it's really just built around this interface. This is the important um, interface here. And so you can um, select um, one or more of um, the different um, uh, properties within these these different facets and gradually filter the um, catalog to reflect the, um, the sorts of technologies that you're interested in. And you'll see that there are some examples um, of the different facets in that list there. So another feature that was important was that um, as well as being a human browsable catalog, we, we recognize that people um, want to be able to get the data out to be able to do something with it. Um, so most of the screens where there is any um, data listed have um, a couple of buttons on, on the screens for downloading that data in a machine readable format. And we support two formats. Um, CSV, <coughs> excuse me, which is um, suitable for um, importing into a spreadsheet like uh, MS Microsoft Excel, or um, JSON, uh, which is a format used um, more typically by software developers for um, including data into into software. So a quick word on sustainability, um, which, as I said earlier, is always a challenge with these things. So this, this work has been um, done by um, a project grant from Arcadia. Um, the budget for um, developing this software is now finished. Um, there is a small budget for maintaining it until um, June 2022. Thereafter, there's no um, particular budget for maintaining this, so we are um, looking for um, a, a future sustainability, uh, sustainable organization of some kind to, to take this on, perhaps. Um, but in the light of that, we've developed it very carefully to be something which is, um, we hope, easily sustained. Um, so we've, um, first of all, I should, I should say that we've um, concentrated on making it um, so that it can be updated um, easily. So we have, um, we're using a, um, a cloud-based um, help desk system, which allows people to contribute um, suggestions for new technologies or, or to suggest changes to existing records. Um, and these are reviewed by the uh, project editorial board at the moment. Um, but then we have introduced these, um, we, we have designed it in such a way that it can be picked up um, more easily by uh, people in future. So the, the data is um, licensed um, fairly openly CC BY. Um, the software is open source um, using the permissive MIT license. Uh, so there's no restriction, for example, on commercial exploitation. The code is freely available. Um, it's designed to be deployed in a, what is now a, or effectively a de facto standard way of deploying software with uh, Docker. And um, in fact, we're actually using Kubernetes as well to, to, to do that. Um, and as I said earlier, we are actively seeking a, a new home for this. Um, so um, if you're interested, please let me know. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. That's the URL for the, the catalog there. Um, and that's my email address if you have any uh, questions after this uh, this conference. Okay, Paul, thank you very much once again for, for being with us today and for a really thank nice you. presentation. So you have here the contact address of the poll. Now you have also the uh, time for the questions. If you have any questions, you can raise your hand now or just you know post your question in q and I'm not sure that I fully understood from your presentation actually the process of um, suggesting the new uh, tool in your catalog. Is it possible, for instance, for me to suggest the new tool? Should yes. Should I do that via email or there is the option to do that uh, through the user interface of your catalog? Yeah, the, the user interface has a, a quite a prominent feedback, feedback button. So you, you simply click that feedback button and you, you get a form which you can fill in. So. And what about, for instance, readiness of the tool? Who is assessed that actually? Can I suggest the readiness? 
Yes, yeah, so that's a that's a good question, actually. And there are a number of those facets where the this is really based on a judgment. So um, it's reasonable that people might wish to challenge the judgment that's been made. Um, so again, through the feedback mechanism, you, you can do that. What we have discovered, though, is the the technology readiness levels have nine levels. Um, but actually, we've everything we've catalogued so far has only used one of two, which is the most, um, the sort of highest level, which is this thing is in production and being used actively, um, or technology readiness three, which is something like it's a prototype. Um, and th there isn't very much um, variation other than those two categories, but, but certainly there are, um, some of these um, aspects can be, uh, are really just judgments and obviously can be challenged. Another one would be adoption level. If we say adoption is limited and somebody says, well, actually we think it's much more widely used than that, then they can, um, and they're welcome to and invited to send that feedback and we can reconsider. Yeah, thank you. I also noticed that you received one positive feedback here in, in the chat from the Professor oh, from Manchester University. So Skomcat looks very useful, more useful than the EOS series catalog, but oh, there are more overlaps between those two catalogs, yeah. That's very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. And there is one question, Q and just to check the discussion. Yeah. Can you say a little bit about how you devise the categories for the catalog? Um, well, really just in the usual way through um, several discussions within the project team, to be honest. Um, one thing I was keen to do was to search for existing um, vocabularies to use in those categories. Um, we didn't really find um, many um, that we found the technology readiness um, levels, as I described, um, which were useful. Um, but in most other cases, we, we had to just invent our own. They're very simple. Um, most of those facets only have about sort of five or six mm -hmm. values. So it's not it's not a complex ontology by any means. Um, we did also reuse some from the Mind the Gap report, which was developed. Um, uh, well, I, I showed the, the URL to that. Um, so they, they developed um, some of the classifications of functions, and um, we, we reused that fairly heavily. Um, one thing I would say is that those categories themselves are um, flexible. Uh, we, we could actually change those um, and expand those, um, and the system supports that. They, they are editable. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Also, there is one suggestion in the chat uh, that uh, DDI, SDI, C, sorry, DDI, CDI should be added in, in the catalog. But you will consider that later, of course. Uh, yes, I'm afraid I don't know what that is, so I will have to look that up. I think here is the, the link, I think, uh, DDI cross-domain integration. Okay. I will check that. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much. Also, uh, I think that uh, uh, Gonzalo responded to some questions in the text mode. So Gonzalo, do you have any comment for your question before you, I close this session and put the and leave, leave the people on the short break? Well, thank you, Dragon, for uh, all of your wonderful work in organizing this uh, conference. I think I respond to them, the main questions that were posed to, to our paper. I would just like to stress out because it, I think it was really um, a good, it was something that made me uh, think a bit. It was about the role of these uh, digital infrastructures in the con pandemic context. And we weren't, well, as uh, everyone, we weren't prepared for, for this kind of uh, new situation. But I think, th I think that this context um, show us the urgency in having this kind of tools ready at once. So everyone, in spite of we are were working at home during the lockdowns, we put all our efforts into developing the platform that we hope will be online in September. What we also did was to a way to promote the richness of and diversity of the resources that will be shown is documents from uh, since the prehistoric period to nowadays was to build a digital exhibition about pandemics across history. And the general public reacted really well and started looking even more in the um, 